Alfa acaba de aparecer. Ok, thank you everybody. La mañana. Tan cerca de te a mí apenas una susuteada lengua de amor. Nada, un pez que traversa una onda de agua. Nos cambiamos la color de nuestros ojos, de un cántaro a otro cántaro, sin que se pierda gotica. Tu vientre, blanca. Un momento, un momento. Ok, aquí yo creo. Ok, Son... ya. Um... Adentro una almendra había dos amantes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y las raíces de tu voz y tus palabras antiguas me hacen un niño jugando en el jardín. Soñé contigo, me dejaste una llave adentro. Muestras cuerpos un desierto. Montañas donde los pájaros cantan diferente. En el, en el en vez de los párparos, signos de otros que hicieron este mismo camino y lo tatuaron para el peregrino, un cerclo, una mano, una vela de agua. Un besico solo me vestía y aún ese me desenudates. Al caer si las follas mus fallan hondos, mus meten en el bosco. El camino iba por la carta, mus apartan los años o mus avesindan. Yo no conocía ninguna lengua del mundo, mejor dicho, conocía una lengua, pero de ella únicamente las palabras estrella, piedra, pájaro, la mímica con la que asociaba esas tres palabras para crear significados durante los días y noches que pasé en la tierra, constituye un extraño círculo, un poema de barro. Adviento. Cuando en otoño atrasan el reloj y es una hora más tarde para el cuerpo y una hora más pronto para el alma, somos jóvenes, en nuestra sangre se refleja el Edén, ya no es que nuestras vidas vayan a dar al mar, caen ahora una cascada como el Amazonas, cayendo entero en todo tu corazón. Prendida la luz eléctrica de la luna, granjas industriales, pupilas de los gatos en los carteles de Busco a mi fu. Acostados los niños por edades cuatro, seis, nueve, doce, cuando enguera la calandria una bombilla, cabecean los guardas de los parques naturales, las cámaras de seguridad, graban huellas dibujándose solas, las babosas cruzan autopistas silentes y avistan los astrónomos, enanas rojas y estrellas extintas. Es la hora, juntamos mano y mano, lengua cuyos nombres son animales, señor. Sácanos de la cama, sírvenos la cena en mitad de la noche. Porcelana negra, ya no es bonito nada, todo es feo. Abejas y bisontes, gorriones, manatíes, asnos y escarabajos, lagartijas. Tilacinos, corales y luciérnagas, hace tiempo que se extinguieron para reencarnarse en junglas. Valles, sierras y desiertos de hombres y mujeres con almas de animales perseguidos. Párpados que se cierran, son pétalos que se abren en un día del Edén. A estas horas todas las camas se orientan como tumbas. Lo rozamos con nuestra coronilla, el jardín del Edén nos humedece el pelo. Lanza arroyos entre camas de hospicios y presidios. Negra pompa que junta los sueños agitados. Despertales en salas de cuidados intensivos, letargo, estremófilos, ECM, el coma. Todo junto con el continente onírico de hibernación del último oso. Todo el invierno ya una sola bola de nieve en el reloj de una copa de helado. 
arde claro de bosque, bulbo del corazón, es hora, prende, saca la lengua, tu jacinto, tú, lengua, di lenguaje, que se adorne, se asombre, y que llame a cenar a ángeles y muertos, y muertos y ángeles se vuelvan girasoles hacia él, tú que tienes la barba ensortijada, vistes un sayo como un everés artesonado por dentro, hueles a una mezcla de mu de muchas velas, lirios y suelo abrillantado por sandalias de santos que arrastraban los pies. Catedral, bosque tallado por ebanistas adentro de una línea de carbón. Arde, amén, arde, llama que no se extingue, hoguera que no se extingue, incendio que jamás, que jamás se extingue. Umbre, umbrales o corolas que perfuman las puertas con su luz al dejar paso a los últimos leones ascendiendo escalinatas. ¿Dónde vais? A otros leones, abridlos como llaves. Para. Okay, I just muted. Okay. Excuse me, can you mute? Uh, okay, I am muting you and you are putting it back. Okay, I know, I get it. Okay, can you? I'm gonna have to throw him out. Okay, no. Okay, can you stop eating? I don't know how to stop it now. Okay, hold on. Estoy intentando sacarlo y no me deja. Okay, he got out. Sorry, perdóname. Sometimes it happens. I don't know why people do not close their mic. Please close your mics. Sorry. About that, Juan Andres, can you start no, again? No problem, no problem. That, those things happen. Um, I don't know where I was. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, you were in, uh, you were finishing this one. A black bubble that encases. Um, umbrales or well, I think it was here. Yeah. Umbrales o corolas que perfuman las puertas con su luz al dejar paso a los últimos leones, ascendiendo escalinatas. ¿Dónde vais? A otros leones. Abrirlos como llaves y a cerrarlos. Engalaná el planeta con espejos que reflejen el cielo sin pausa, pues la tierra es cielo que está viniendo, y sus valles son cabos donde el cielo ha penetrado ya. Montañas, bahías del cielo, templos de la ciudad que desciende, columnas como caudas de cometas. Puentes todos levadizos. Abríos a él, porque nadie ha querido esta carne y la luna que sale sobre el zoco y el esputo de los crueles la han acusanado. Uñas, pelo y sudor, pero ¿quién llega cuando ya han clausurado los puestos, enrollado las alfombras? ¿Quién da por esta carne no una moneda sino el mercado, menos una moneda, el infinito, menos un cuerpo? Porque nadie ha querido esta carne, pero él sí, tú sí, mi señor sí. Río de apresurada sangre y llanto. Orina y sudor, río, río y endulzo el mar, o injértame los tuétanos en melocotenero florecido. Ama esta pena en pie, cartílagos y pelo, tú que tienes los ojos debajo de las alas, pico de pájaro, pero sonríes, señor, con la sonrisa enigma de un polluelo famélico y rapaz. Sírvete la cena en mitad de la noche, quebranta mis huesos y aletea y chilla y lánzame, señor, una y mil veces desde el cielo para extraer de mí tu regaliz, mi alma. Quebranta mis huesos, Señor. Quebranta mis órganos, Señor. Descórchame, arráncame los sueños, las pesadillas y el deseo, el deseo y el dolor, y saca un géiser por mi boca desde mi hermano y desde mi amigo, Señor. Parientes, allegados, los mendigos, a todos los que amé y los que afrenté, y animales, y hasta las malas hierbas que arranqué y el jeco que aplasté solo por gusto. Arráncame todo el amor del mundo, Señor. Rebaña, chupa, tira de las raíces la belleza, saca un géiser de mí, un solo géiser muy bonito y muy alto, Señor de tu corazón, por los corazones de todos y por mi corazón. Enjúgame el cuerpo como un niño que se resistía al baño y suéltame en el jardín. 
Habib de Habiba, amor de los amores, cuerpo de los cuerpos, vid, peras y manzanas. Ok, perdona Juan Andrés, pero me perdí un poco y estoy dejándoles leer tranquilos porque me tuve que apurar. Uh, he finished Perfect. first, I couldn't, sorry, I'm going to let you, those that do not speak Spanish, I'm going to let you read the PowerPoint little by little. And then uh, I don't know if, if we have time for all the poems. Maybe we should just uh, miss uh, um, skip one or something. Maybe. Well, we'll see. I feel bad for you. No problem. No problem. Uh, should we go to Villancico? Okay, hold on. Little, little song. Little song, no? Yeah, Villancico. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Eh, mamá, cuando me encojo de hombros, créelo, no es por indiferencia o por desdén. Si alzo los hombros es para que puedas vestirme con aquel pijama chino de fajín rojo y pantalones verde, lago. Tan lago que tenían cosidas unas grullas de patas muy largas como arcos tensados con flechas de sueño. No es que yo alce los hombros con adulto pudor, más bien me aupo para ver si llegas una tarde de viernes. Una de esas en que tú me recoges del colegio, me tomas de una mano y papá tira de la otra rumbo al escaparate de la pajarería. ¡Ay, cuánto movimiento, pájaros rojos, verdes, preferibles! Aquellos niños que medían lo que ocho patas de araña puestas en línea recta y se reían de mi bici de paseo y mi mochila marca Poncio Pilato. O porque yo no era como ellos, un canario escapado en el otoño y mis disfraz de mundo me quedaba raro excepto alguna vez, excepto cuando Agosto nos subía con su cola a la montaña de abuelos y de titas, y desde allí mirábamos la luna nueva. Es una de esas gotas de cera que tú limpias con plancha y, la, y las hojas de un periódico. Es un cisne perdido en el océano, o es tal vez el futuro y aerostático globo de hidrógeno y de respiración tuya, mamá, y de las titas, la tata y los abuelos, que una noche, con toda la fuerza del novilunio, Tirará de mi cuerpo para que sea alma, oreada ave desaparecida en un bosque de claros de bosque. Okay. Should we go with, with the last one or uh, it's, yes. it's fine for me to, to stop here because I don't you, want you to wanna stop here? Okay. Yeah, I, I think Gracias. That's for that. Y perdona por la interrupción. No, Thank no, no, you, Andrés. No. It was beautiful. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to ask everybody to please mute your microphone. For me, it's a lot. I have to be paying attention to the PowerPoints, but I also have to let people come in. And if I also have to uh, mute your microphone, is I got lost. That's what happened. I got lost with uh, Juan Andrés. So please mute your mics. Por favor, eh, silencien su micrófono, porque yo estoy pasando el PowerPoint Points, según van leyendo y tengo que dejar entrar a gente también. Es mucho si también tengo que apagar sus micrófonos por, y, y por eso me perdí con Juan Andrés. Así que por favor cierren sus micrófonos o silencienlos. Gracias. The next, um, the next um, a poet is the American poet Albert um, eh, Mobile. So how would you pronounce your, your, your last name? Mobile? Mobilio. Mobilio. Okay, sorry. Albert Mobilio. Okay. Um, please, uh, uh, Nuria, can you read the the um, the bio? Let me mute myself. Uh, Albert Mobilio is the author of four books of poetry, Same Faces. Touch Wood, Me with Animal Towering, and The Geographics. In 2017, he published the fiction book entitled Games and Stunts. His essays and reviews have appeared in, Pari in Paris Review Daily, Harper's, The New York Times Book Review, Bomb, Cabinet, and Tin House. He was a 2015 McDowell Fellow and received 
the Andy Warhol Arts Writers Fellowship in 2017. A former staff writer at Book Forum, he is currently a staff writer at Hyperallergic and an associate professor of literary studies at the New School's Eugene Lang College. Welcome, Albert. Thank you, Nuria, and thank you, Marta, for the invitation to read today. Uh, the first poem I'll read is titled Amphitheater. Bone colored hats provided shelter from the heat. Each stone bench required its own way of walking toward it. Small commotions among children caused a few to call out. Many came to see string tied and untied and tied again. Others came because their newspapers were tired of being read. They watched scenes animated by tattered drums and bouquets gathered by girls along the path. They came and carried themselves as soldiers do, and they studied how to say farewell and to listen to that word as it falls from the highest to the lowest steps. The sky was worn as if it were a coat. The flutes from the stage conjured aloneness, their melodies hard to remember. They came for that and they sat with each other and they said, these are trees and those are trees too. When morning sunlight flickered on wet grass, they filed out, each bearing a portion of the hero's dying vow into the streets and venerable parlors, shards of singing left behind. Moods at Noon. I was rude to the king of soap. My childhood is no excuse or even the source of blame. One loses sight of enthusiasms. My precautions kept guard over me while I let others smoke stylishly. In consequence, my thoughts were trivial, commonplace. I was a neutral person, so I decided to undergo an operation. Voices drifted in from the waiting room and pumps pumped something new where it supposedly would do its best. People, I'm told, who went to very good colleges had their hands in it. But still, again, I was rude to the king of soap. Every day a bit older, useless to brood more than you have to or try untangling motive from its synapse. I found small bewilderments like candy in my lunch bag. They were sticky and they spoiled my precious subjectivity. There's nothing worth saying to this king, his ministers, his mopey wife of soap, the smear of lipstick, the grimy crown, to serve the pleasure of this dawdler king, I genuflect, then slightly clown. Forest for trees. What use are you, not even knowing the names of flowers or able to discern whether breaking branches or car backfire racks your nights? The pastorals more intricate than couplets teach. There are stoic forms that keep proper distance between mountain and mountainous. These fields burn their flames a lustrous verdict that this meadow sways toward. What use are you, never caring to apprehend this path, its scuffs, strewn stalks, and flesh-smooth leaves, the whirring ground they cloak? streaks of such. You find a place to put your hands and when they are where they're supposed to be, you begin to perform as advertised. Outside something barks or maybe just some coughing. In either case, the disturbance means the coming darkness can be lived through, can be considered a kind of passage and others, despite how precarious the transit have arrived their coats still cold on the bed, emotions 
sifting out positions in the small talk about gradations of normality. Higher ups had their say, players will sort out the consequences. Impatient in the high grass, you long for finishing touches, a chance to leave the need for prediction behind. But no one's back at the house where you ought to be, but aren't. That exaggerated care guests took on the noisy upstairs floorboards wasn't as helpful as they hoped. Maybe crisscrossing echoes complete the overall motif, or maybe they only confuse. It's not as easy to say whose hairpins cluttered the pristine sink. Time, then, to head off to the field again, inhaling wayward dust and indolence, the sun blinking through the treetops. Face down in this unmowed realm, your inmost pause now attentive to nothing but the fitful crush of air. The passers-by pass by. A dowsing fiasco causes a mob to gather around the perforation. They disarm the fiddler and divide up the quiet parts of his instrument. Eventuality was what they labeled it later on. Let's cozy up to the jukebox, swing changeable amidst it. Forestall this house from ending up mouthy squawking wall to wall. Unruly cakewalk, then first aid kits, the hurley, the burly, the cops in several sizes, the burden we're endeared to. Middling fun at best, but the trailing disappointments glint like orbits of a planetarium spheres. This clock is really a camera filming photos of credible wilderness for the esthetes back home. Vibrations my camouflage. I'm nestled swell in a theme park log flume. Pinholes help with seeing, but you have to poke your own. Gentle votary, manipulate the scene. Count the Saturns and Plutos, our sprawled bequest of voyage. Everyone who's anyone now finds the lawn, the lawn chairs too. Chimes ring tall as nervy, lustful gloom ensues. And the last poem, an implication. Look what happened to my broken toaster. No one fathoms the distress I endured when it died. I don't have the connective tissue that enables me to wear my own face without distraction. Hence, I am a ringer for myself. When I read in a novel the expression, actual sex, I thought instead, swarm of bees. The toaster is broken, and maybe that explains it. We know enough about our own hands to use them, but not enough to leave them alone. The mail is too large for my mailbox, so I've stopped waiting. Guys in black jackets, that shows always in reruns. My somber kernel of doubt is unlikable. The toast used to rhyme like old and made poems, and now it's prose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next poet is the Argentinian poet Nancy um, Montemuro. Uh, just a minute, and I'll go and do the screen share. Okay, perfect. Okay. 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 Did I open it? Yes. Okay. Let's open. Okay. There it goes. Um, okay, Nuria, can you read the bio? Sure. Nancy Montemurro nació en Buenos Aires, Argentina. Es docente y traductora. Fue miembro fundador de la cooperativa editorial NUSUD, surgida a finales de los 80 y con un gran aporte editorial para escritores noveles en los años 90. 
Forma parte de la Galería de Arte Contemporáneo Torres Bartet como redactora de la curaduría. Estudia letras en la Universidad de Buenos Aires, Argentina. Publicó en poesía a Doncella, Craquelas, Arcanos Mayores y ediciones eh, 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 Rumbos del Viento, Jardines en el Cielo y tiene inéditos los libros Amar a un Padre y el Bosque. Bienvenida, Nancy. Thank you very much. I don't speak English very well. <laughs> um, I will speak and read in Spanish. Uh, thank you for his invitation y for your work, Nuria and Marta. Mm. Uh, I'm very happy, mm. but I read in Spanish. <laughs> Good. Bien. Um, voy a leer unos poemas que pertenecen al libro eh, Jardines en el Cielo. No está terminado de editar, está en, en, la, en la editorial, en la, en la imprenta. Es un libro que está dedicado a mi madre, y bueno, en orden cronológico repaso su vida desde la niñez hasta la despedida final en su muerte. Esos ok, si sabes que este libro pertenece a un libro que está terminando, que se llama Gardens in the Sky, que está dedicado a su madre, y es como una biografía de cuando su madre era joven hasta su muerte. Thank you. La siembra y la cosecha. A los ocho años, la Aurelia seguía la rastra que era tirada a caballo. Quitaba los yuyitos para desmalezar antes de la siembra. A los nueve, se iba detrás del arado que abría surcos, esparciendo los granos como quien hace de sí misma una semilla y se echa a tierra para dar todo de sí. Cuando era el tiempo de la cosecha, sujetaba de su cintura frágil de niña esa maleta larga de cuero donde se iban acumulando las mazorcas. Ella tiraba, cinchaba, sin que le importara el peso del maíz ni de la vida. De bota en bota. De bota en bota anduvo la familia de las flores, los fior del mundo, como si fuera necesario poner pie donde va el pie, hacer huella. El bisabuelo cambió la bota de Italia y se fue a la de Santa Fe. Mi abuelito dejó Santa Fe y no va que el destino quiso que mi mamá, la que vino con él a Buenos Aires, terminara a los 14 obrera en una fábrica de botas. Este fue el modo en que nos fuimos armando el suelo, poniendo pie donde llama la tierra para tener un lugar donde caerse muerto, como quien dice. Sí, sí, sí. Oh, sorry. <ríe> Leche, es la otra. Leche de yegua. A poco de nacer, la tos convulsa casi me mata. Era la primera hija y mis padres, desesperados, no sabían qué hacer. Otra vez el destino acababa, acercaba la muerte a los pequeños, como una desgracia de familia. El doctor Gutiérrez no dio mucha esperanza, pero un paisano de cerca de las vías, viendo a mi padre triste y preocupado, le dijo que debía darme leche de yegua, de esa yegua que había parido hacía poco en los corrales cercanos, que podía ir cuando quisiera, que le daría un poco cada vez. Y ahí fue mi madre día tras día, con su jarro enlosado. Una mujer criada en el campo, frente a una yegua que podía salvarle a su hija, un giro del tiempo en la sincronía de la vida, para romper hechizos y destinos. Lo cierto es que me salvaron mi madre y esa yegua, y aquí... Agradecida, lo estoy contando. El vestido. El casamiento del hijo del doctor era una fiesta fina. 
Mamá se había comprado un vestido beige con corsé de pasamanería en lentejuelas y canutillos dorados. Le sentaba tan bien. ¿Qué fue lo que manchó el vestido? Lo lavó con absoluta delicadeza, lo planchó del revés, pero el calor le achicharró el adorno. Y ya era la hora de partir. Lloraba con la tristeza de quien conoce lo irremediable. Nunca la había visto así y aún pequeña, algo dentro de mí se aliaba a su dolor con mi almita también achicharrada. Apúrate que se hace tarde, fue todo lo que atinó a decir mi padre. Malbones. ¿Cuánto han crecido los malbones? Encontré por fin el lugar donde se sienten cómodos. Parece haber un microclima en este patio que los ha reverdecido y ya florecen. Fue un poco como la vida, que reniega y resiste al esplendor de lo bello y al final se rinde. La enredadera. Mirando por la ventana que da al patio se ve la enredadera. Por un costado crece verde y en el otro está seca. Amor oculto la llaman porque sus flores se esconden detrás de las hojas. Aclara mamá que es enredadera de verano y de invierno y ella, que nunca fue de muchas palabras, me enseña sin darse cuenta lo que yo debo aprender para mi vida. Mientras se señala el costado mustio dice, las ramas secas hay que sacarlas para que ahí mismo nazcan las verdes. De Les Poem, el último, después de la lluvia. Es verano entrado. Amaneció húmedo esta mañana, debe de haber llovido anoche. El parque rebosa frescura y brilla el verde en la plenitud del día. Los pájaros a sus anchas cantan felices. La habitación da al parque y aunque enferma mi madre, puede captar estos detalles de belleza como si Dios le estuviera diciendo, mira qué magnífica mi obra. Thank you very much. So sorry. Gracias. No, thank you. For... Está dejando entrar a alguien. Thank you, Nashi. That was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And the last poet uh, is going to be Christopher. Hold on. Que no quiere hablar. Christopher. Just a minute, please. The reason is not opening. Okay. Just a minute, please. Okay, finally. Okay. Now I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Now I kept pushing unmute, but it wasn't wasn't unmuting. Um, okay, uh, let me see you, if this opens time. up. Okay, hold on, hold on. I need to open the, the it's not opening. Here it goes. Okay, opening, good. Okay, hold on. Now I'm going to share. Again, I don't know why it doesn't want to share. No. <laughs> okay. I'm going to open it again, okay? Okay, so sure. Something <laughs> is wrong with your, I don't know why something is wrong with your PowerPoint. It doesn't want to open. And when it opens, it doesn't want to share. Ah, okay. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Sorry about this. Sometimes it happens. It's we're all used to technical difficulties with computers. Yeah, no, it's, it's when you last suspected it happened. Exactamente, como como siempre. <laughs> okay. 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 
something is wrong with your I don't know why. Okay, okay hold on. Mm. Hold on, okay? I don't know what's wrong. It's not opening and I don't know why. I could try opening mine. Yeah, but they are not gonna see it. That's the problem. Right, I can't share. Share screen, share screen. Yeah, I did that already, of course. Sudden, something is wrong with the PowerPoint. It's the PowerPoint okay. and I don't know why. It is. Okay. I think if Chris opens his, though, he can share his screen as well. Uh, hold on. I have to make him the host for him to open. Do you want to open it and I'll make you the host? That's the problem. I don't know why is the PowerPoint wrong. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm going to stop the video. Okay. I've got it open for me, but... Uh, no, you're not, no, you're not going to see it because you're not... No, it's, it's... Right, I need to share screen with it, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and you cannot. That's why. I don't know right. why this PowerPoint is not opening. Well, that's okay. I'm just, I'm... Okay, hold on. Hold on. We'll try it again, okay? Oh, there it goes. You see oh, it? Okay. okay, hold on because I uh, uh, now I have to. <laughs> it's always something. I can't guess. La verdad que es. Lo estamos viendo, Marta. Sí, pero paré el recording por todo esto y ahora tengo que. Ahí va. Okay, thank you. We'll start again and sorry about this. Okay. Okay. No <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, Nuria, can you read the video? Thank you. Sí. ¿Vemos la video? Sí, por favor. Sí, ponla en, pant en pantalla. ¿No lo ves? Yo no, lo estoy viendo. Yo, no, la, solamente veo la primera, la primera diapositiva. Que, ahí está, ahí está. Okay. Christopher Sawyer Laucano is the author of more than a half of dozen books including the biographies of Paul Bowles, uh, E. Quimins, and a portrait of the group of American writers in Paris after World War II. He's also known as a translator and poet. Talisman House published his latest book of poems, Musuri Montague Miscellany, in 2013. He lives in <clears throat> Turner's Falls, Massachusetts. Welcome, Christopher. Whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. Flight. Seagulls fly in vectors through morning fog, calling to us in moaning tones of an unflinching today. Besotted with routine like the gulls, we keep moving because that's what we can do to avoid being immutably fixed in place. We used to think that obstacles existed only to be overcome, but now something else far larger than we are takes flight. Today is only a specific point in our own time out of time, <clears throat> a midway place in the midst of a miasma, but we know where to find refuge under the gray sky, our lips seek tenderness. Poem for Patricia. Depth now in place of time, surely depth. Not the harsh wind blowing the snow across the path, but the sun melting the whirling flakes in mid-flight. We collect without collecting, hold precious what some would think fool's gold. We utter each other's words and thoughts, anticipate movement, Uncover desire in a glance, or your arm in mine. We know that time does not make poems, that feeling truly is first, and that struggle becomes a gift. And we know at the last hour, we will hop a rumbling freight train, share an orange on a San Francisco hill. Poem for Richard Serra. 
nothing supports anything. Convergence in corners converges. Grace is groundedness. Flux scuff shines brighter than bile left out in rain and snow. Enclosure and opening as closure is a beginning. Scars shine and scratches cower. Left of absolute center, another center. Gravity, a threat. Defiance, a gesture of optimism. Landlocked horizon, no boats, no waves, as if we had never been airborne or never pinned our hopes on some dream of sky. In earth to earth transcendence, transmittal is elemental. Decline descends, blinds fold, years flap, not collapsing but could. Anything supports nothing. Temporality, a myth. Transit gone, just a hint of a future. Push it forward. Time and tide. A primacy here speaks more than it knows, lingers in the landscape long after the moon has begun its ascent. Faith deposits its calling card in circumstances like this, which helps to keep the chin propped up, even when we suspect a grand fiction is being arrayed in front of our very noses. But since we can't see chin or nose, we continue to render our bargain with time and tide, play it with flair, even with hope. Zacatecas Express. Things like these come frightfully close to the heart, conjure up madness, desire for transmutation of the flesh, when the risk of apotheosis would suffice. Suddenly clouds, dark as Piranesi's famous skull, come out of hiding, waste their rain on yellow grass. Squirrels scatter, birds nestle under the cracked eaves. There are ways to account, yet no way to account. It's a real Mexican standoff, complete with sombreros, cilantro, chiles, dusty street with dank burros. Not a mnemonic interlude, not an odd figment, but a viable, visible exit from the ongoing matchmaking of future ideas and past things. How it is. Say it is a geranium in a black pot or a warbler on the shoulder that makes the difference in how we do what we do when we do it, as if the clouds never existed. I peel off the yellow cigar band, attempt deafness, though it does not come naturally to my right hand. These are the basic facts of everydayness. Nothing will ever be like something. Pumpkins will never fall from any tree and the sun stays aloft, at least for now, and the moon is far, far away. Force. The notices that arrive with the wind are not yet signals of distress, only warnings of what impends. We muster ourselves for dress rehearsals, prepare for the what if, the honking geese sensing the unease, mount a decisive push, force flying against force. Private noise. As always, intervals between intervals and betweens the in-betweens. Nighttime lurks behind the cloud bank as an invisible presence, a twilight constant. Present resides in the midst of absence as an imploded expression an alto stratus afternoon, giving way to deeper dark. Acute intuitions create ironic suspicions of useless experience loaded up with ordinary details. It would be nice to strike a balance between intent and action, 
with some sort of encompassing equivalence carried over, though not, of course, an exact transliteration of meaning, meeting, meaning. Words compete with one another, struggle, but hardly inveigh against my own private noise. Alphabet of necessity. Cosmic consequences are inchoate, while surface attributions rise up to reckon their own demise. Depth perishes in shallow choices, and the alphabet of necessity is being erased from solitary signposts. Neither the regular nor the irregular can conspire to cast anchors into the endless ocean of time. I'll try it another way since I'm not any more sure of what is required. Remembering to remember. A fine drizzle is falling and the ear catches a low distant murmur rising from a place we can't discover. Lines from memory come spilling out, but it seems now that we remember only to remember. The light has reached the top of the windows Preferring regretting to supposing nothing ever happened or will happen again, the impossible stretches forth palely. Firm doors open and close. Resolute windows stay shut. The improbable shrinks boldly, and an unknowable something is quietly slinking away into the air. Last poem, Swallowed. A conundrum over there, swallowed in the depths of the snows of yesteryear, buried and almost forgotten. Swallowed in the depths, whether intentionally or not, buried and almost forgotten, impinging on our beliefs. Whether intentionally or not, we ignore the more obvious reckonings impinging on our beliefs, resist nostalgia creeping in. We ignore the more obvious reckonings footprints so easily provide. No need to get swallowed in the mystery. Resist nostalgia creeping in. Footprints so easily provide a way to understand how we journeyed to this place. No need to get swallowed in the mystery. A way for us to understand is not as elusive as it seems, but we willfully ignore how we journeyed to this place is not as elusive as it seems, swallowed in the depths of the snows of yesteryear, buried and almost forgotten. Thank you, gracias a todos. <laughs> gracias, thank you, Christopher, gracias. Muy bien. Ahora, now we start the Q&A. Ahora empezamos la sección de preguntas y respuestas. Si alguien quiere quiere hacer alguna pregunta, por favor, levante la mano o simplemente pre, eh, pregunte. ¿Alguien quiere hacer alguna pregunta? Ok, entonces uh, tengo, voy a, a... Tengo una pregunta. Sí, Noria. Tengo una pregunta para, para los uh, cuatro poetas. Y primero de todo, eh, muchísimas gracias por, por, por esta lectura. Eh, ha, ha sido realmente eh, maravillosa. He, he disfrutado todas las lecturas. Uh, thank you so much for all these readings. I really enjoyed um, all, uh, each one of, of uh, uh, these readings to, today. And uh, I would like to ask you um, uh, just a couple of questions for the four of you. Uh, first of all, where, um, what, what, or who informs your uh, poetry, and um, you know, also the influences. What are your influences? What informs your poetry? And also, I would like to know um, what, um, what book um, you are reading current currently. What is uh, the readings that you are um, uh, doing uh, currently? Uh, mi pregunta es un par de preguntas para los cuatro. Y uh, me gustaría saber qué es lo que, cuáles son las influencias en vuestra uh, poesía, qué es lo que informa, ¿no? O quién o qué uh, informa su poesía, uh, sus influencias. Y también me gustaría saber qué, qué, qué lectura están leyendo, qué libro están leyendo en estos momentos. Okay. 
Go first. <ríe> ¿Quién quiere ser primer, contestar primero? Ok. <ríe> um, well, thank you, first of all. Um, uh, I, uh, uh, I actually, um, uh, my last book, which came out um, last year, uh, was essentially... Uh, written after my my wife died and was essential was meditations basically on uh going on and i read a, a couple of poems from that collection uh and my new book is is concerned primarily with language and um i've always been concerned with language as a translator uh as a poet as a writer uh i i love language um many languages um And so, um, and I'm reading uh, right now, Patrick Pritchett, uh, Susan Schultz. Uh, mm. I wrote a libretto for, uh, based on Garcia Lorca uh, for a Russian composer. Um, so I've been busy. <laughs> Juan Andreas, what are you reading now? What are you... Juan Andreas? Sí. Thank you very much for for everything for your question. Um, well, I currently I'm reading a book of Lila Thembarain, um, um, soft matter. So, uh, bueno, materia materia blanda. It's kind of um, yeah, it's like poet um, prose poetry, so to say. And it's um, well, I'm I'm enjoying it very much. But uh, usually, I uh, mostly read uh, essays and uh, also like um, uh, short stories, like Kafka's and so on. And my, I think my my poetry is is made by by those influences more than poetry, or not necessarily poetry. But if I if I think of poets that that I Um, that I truly love, uh, they would be like, I don't know, like Rimbaud, Kafka, um, uh, John Ashbery, um, um, Lorenzo García Vega, by the way, he's a great poet and he's not so um, well known as, as he should be. Um, And well, that I, I Ingeborg Bachmann, and I don't know if this is a German poet, I don't know if you, you know her. It's yeah. uh, I, I love I love her, her thoughts and her, her essays and novels, and everything is about the about how uh, if poetry is still is still possible in, in these days, and, and, and that's my that has been my <laughs> my main thoughts about uh, poetry when I when I write too. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you, Juan. Gracias. Albert, can you? Albert? Okay. Anybody else wants to answer? No se oye, Albert, no se oye, no se oye. The mic is closed. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh... I had a big bag of potato chips here and I didn't want anyone to hear. <laughs> uh, my influences change all the time, but I certainly am a huge fan of Wallace Stevens and and John Ashbery. Uh, currently reading A History of Roman Emperors by Mary Beard mm -hmm. and a Simenon novel since there are few hundred of them. Uh, I'm not even sure which one I'm reading right now. <laughs> one of the Magret novels. Na y Nancy, ¿y tú? ¿Qué estás leyendo? ¿Qué te ¿Cuáles son tus influencias? Eh, yo creo que influencias han sido siempre mujeres, lectura de mujeres en general, eh, de todo tipo. Mucho las mujeres argentinas, también muchas autoras eh, norteamericanas, no por quedar bien con el programa, pero en el último tiempo he estado leyendo a María Oliver, eh, Audre Lorde eh, y, y otras. Eh, y después estuve leyendo últimamente en realidad literatura norteamericana porque estaba cursando la materia en la facultad, mm. así que he leído grandes autores que estuvieron en Entreguerra 
y, y mucha prosa, no leí tanta poesía, pero bueno, esa fue, ha sido mi última lectura. Ok, sí, es saying that she is, uh, is reading a lot of women, a lot of uh, uh, women poets, overall Argentinian poets, but also American poets like Mary Oliver or, or Audre Lorde, also because she's now taking a course uh, in the university, in, in the Buenos Aires University, about American poetry. So that's why she was reading so many um Uh, uh, American Women Poets. <laughs> okay, muy bien. Vanessa, do you want to make a... Uh, Vanessa, querías hacer una pregunta? Do, do you want to ask a question? Sí, buenas tardes y muchas gracias a todos por estar acá. Muy buena, muy bonita poesía. Eh, mi pregunta es para Nancy. Eh, Nancy, ¿por qué sentiste la necesidad de escribir este libro para acerca de tu madre, para recordarla? Y también... Eh, el poema sobre la leche de, de yegua, ¿es cierto? ¿Realmente tu mamá iba y buscaba la leche de yegua para tratar de salvar tu vida? Gracias. Vanessa, ahora hazlo en inglés. Pregunta en inglés porque tú sabes inglés perfectamente. Okay. Thank you everyone for being here. And my question is um, it's for Nancy. I want to know what inspired her. Um, or why did she feel the need to write this, this book about her mother and her life? Um, and because all the points that she... Um, wrote in this book, it's um, dedicated to her mother. So I want to know why she felt the need to write it. And I want to know if the poet's about the milk. Um, how do you say jaguar? Oh, wow. The Mayor. milk, um, the Mayor. milk, if it's, if it's true, if that story was actually true. Thank you. Sí, gracias por tu pregunta. Eh, bueno, empiezo por atrás, en realidad. Sí, la historia de la leche de yegua ha sido cierta. Eh, eran otras épocas. No había quizás tantos antibióticos y efectivamente ha sido este, alguien que también vendría del campo que, que explicó que esa leche tenía las proteínas o las defensas que yo necesitaba para salvarme y sí, efectivamente mi mamá iba a buscar la, la leche para, para y me salvó, bueno, finalmente. Eh, la necesidad del libro en realidad eh, se basó en la cantidad de de imágenes tan bellas que por ahí me había dejado mi madre, y un sentido de la vida muy profundo, la fuerza vital que tenía esta mujer que había nacido en, la, en el campo, trabajado la tierra, y que de alguna manera siguió a través de su vida con mucha sencillez, eh, dejando muchas enseñanzas y, y marcas muy profundas, que casi era imposible no grabarlas en un poema. Eh, creo que la vida misma me llevó a poder decir, eh, hacer una celebración de su vida y, y también una elegía porque llegó hasta la muerte y quería despedirla también. Ok, so she says that, um, yes, it is true that uh, they, they've had her mere me me milk to save her life. That, that is a true story. So the poem is based on what happened to, to her when she was a baby. So, and it is, uh, she, also, she also wanted to write this book uh, for her, uh, remembering her mother, because her mother, although she was a simple woman, a woman who worked the land, she was a, she was a very strong woman who had a, a, a great sense of life and that she left a lot of teachings to her in that um but it's also an elegy because the book goes from her from her mother when she was young until she died so it's not about also it's not only about her life but it's also an elegy for her mother Muy bien. alguien más quiere hacer alguna pregunta Okay, yo quiero hacer una pregunta entonces. So, I, I'm going to ask a, a, a question. Uh, uh, Albert, did you... <laughs> yeah, he looks at me like... <laughs> uh, you use language to interrupt reality. But sooner or later in the poem, you go back to reality. So you interrupt, you go and take something from, from reality and interrupt that reality with language. And so, but sooner or later, through that 
transformation of language. You make us see the same event through other lenses, through the lens of language, and the reality is transformed. That's how I read your book. Mm -hmm. But Juan Andres takes, in my opinion, for what I read of your poetry, you take an event, you interrupt that event through language, but you never come back to that event. You just go off with language. That's my opinion, okay? That's when I read your poem, you not only transform reality, you just, just escape reality through language all the time. So I was very much comparing your, both of your poetries because you do something similar, similar, but the purpose is different. So Albert wants to transform reality through language, but never really escapes reality. But for me, Juan Andres is not just transformed, he wants to escape reality through language. And I want you to speak a little bit about that. What, what is language? And how is the relationship of language and reality through poetry for you too? Okay, esto es lo que, lo que les pregunté. Cuando yo leí a Albert, eh, me dio la sensación que interrumpía la, la, la realidad, toma, toma un, un, algo de la realidad y, y lo transforma, lo revisa a través del idioma, de la, del lenguaje. Pero, más, pero en algún momento dado del poema vuelve a esa realidad. Y lo vemos transformada esa realidad por el lenguaje. Juan Andrés hace algo similar, toma algo real, pero a través del de lenguaje, no es que la transforme, es que escapa a través del lenguaje. Entonces, no solo transforma, pero rompe con la realidad a través del lenguaje. Y, que, y por eso les pregunto, ¿cuál es su relación o cómo ven la relación del lenguaje con la realidad? So, uh, uh, I just said the same thing in Spanish. Well, so, how would you see language and reality in your porn, Albert? Tienes, you, you have to un, un, unmute yourself. Oh, okay, thank you. I don't know if I've ever thought of it as quite that kind of a dichotomy, but uh, I think drugs and alcohol are a better tool for escaping reality than, than language. <laughs> but uh, I guess the idea of, of disrupting reality requires some foreground of something that's a bit more comprehensible. I, I would I would just say that I the tension between uh, sort of a recognizable scene or recognizable uh, phrases and uh, the disruption of those seems to me to be where my interests lie. Yeah. Eh, bueno, que no, vea, no, 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 no está tan eh, consciente de esa dicotomía y además que él cree que las drogas o el alcohol son mucho mejor para, para escapar de la realidad que, que el idioma. Pero que, que el, lo, cómo ve esa relación del lenguaje y la realidad es que toma una escena ¿no? y, y, y la interrumpe, e interrumpe también las frases, el idioma que hablarían de esa escena eh, a través de, del lenguaje y rompe a, y, y de ese modo sí rompe con la realidad. Juan Andrés, ¿qué crees? Eh, ¿Estás de acuerdo o cuidado que estás también silenciado? Uh -huh. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I would say I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I, if I can answer in English, but I will try. Um, so I I think I I started from the point of uh, of that. Um, Well, that, that phrase of Ungaretti that said, Cercum paese innocente, uh, I'm searching for, a, for an innocent uh, mm -hmm. land. And I think, well, uh, for me, um, language is guilty. I mean, it, it's, the, the, um, it's the first step of, of, of the world we have, is, is like accept our reality. Mm -hmm. So I, I like um, the first the first step I, I take is to to censor that language and destroy it like from to the ground, so to say. 
and um and and also it's a, like an, a personal um well um, it's i i can't i, I can take the, the reality from uh, from uh, yeah from some some experience and translating it into poetry that's something i, I can do so i i um, my start point is like the explosion of of um, reality into into the language and 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 i um well i think the the the, the way uh, um, um language should um work is like to to not accept like even the 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 the, the more the in a single world from from this uh, from this reality that we are living like wars everywhere and so so it's like um um and uh, and it's for me like it's more involved a poem is it's more involved when it doesn't uh, take anything from that um ahora dilo en español porque hay gente hay varias personas que no hablan inglés vale <laughs> Eh, a ver, me ocurre que eh, generalmente me parece, bueno, a mí me parece que el, el poema es un acto de lenguaje, pero también hay una imposibilidad personal, es decir, yo, yo soy incapaz de, de partir de, de una experiencia, quizá por, bueno, por lecturas y por, eh, de, por una desconfianza total en el lenguaje, ¿no? Sí. Eh, en el lenguaje como, o, 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 en la realidad y en la realidad que habita el lenguaje, ¿no? Eh, y por una censura total de esa realidad que nos han brindado. Es decir, que pienso que, la, que la, la, el mayor acto de subversión es romper con el lenguaje que nos transmiten, por así decirlo. ¿no? Y, y, que, y que quizá hay que partir de ahí, pero también, me, quiero decir, es, es mi camino. Que cada uno, eh, cada uno a, a, tiene que hacer el suyo. ¿no? Yo creo que también hay una, ya digo, una imposibilidad personal expresiva, ¿no? Ese, esa abdicación de, de la realidad. Gracias, gracias, gracias por hacer las dos. <ríe> eh, ¿Alguna pregunta más del público? Anybody else wants to ask a question? No, there are many comments saying uh, thank you for such a beautiful uh, poetry readings. Um, María María Elena García is saying thank you. It was a uh, it was a very beautiful uh, reading. Uh, to all the poets. Okay, so uh, there are several comments like that in the chat room. Anybody else? Any comments? Okay, thank you all for coming today. This is the last uh, reading of this semester. We will be back in, in February with another two uh, Latin American poets, a Spaniard and uh, one or two American, also American poets. Uh, thank you all and thank you for a great reading. Gracias. Thank you, everybody. Gracias. Gracias, gracias a todos por gracias estar todos. aquí y gracias por una, eh, una lectura preciosa a todos. Gracias. Que tengan una feliz Navidad y un feliz Año Nuevo para todos. Bueno, Lo mismo. Igualmente. Okay. Happy Igualmente. holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Gracias. gracias Felices por la fiestas, todo el mundo. ¿Vale? Gracias. Gracias. Hasta pronto. Gracias.